Welcome to United for a Healthy Stoughton. My name is Stephanie Patton and I'm your host for the next half hour. And I'm excited to have with me the clinical staff from the Stoughton Youth Commission. So I would like to welcome Melissa Dawson and Teresa Tapper to the show. Thank so welcome you. ladies. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah. So, um, so today we're gonna talk about the Stoughton Youth Commission and we're gonna focus on more of sort of the clinical side of things. So just as a, an intro, we also do a lot of prevention work out of the Youth Commission, our Oasis Coalition and our Substance Abuse Prevention Collaborative Grant um, also come out of that office. We have an AmeriCorps fellow, but today we're really gonna focus on the clinical work and we're gonna talk about a lot of the services we provide that I think sometimes people are unaware of. And um, so let's start with that. So maybe we can start a little bit with the history of the Youth Commission, because we've been around for a long time. And 43 uh, years. 43 actually. years. Yeah, so awesome. Which is pretty exciting, so. Yeah. So 43 years means 1975, No, uh, right? 76. 76, yeah. okay. So you yeah. don't never do math on television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we used to be in that yellow building that was up on um, Pleasant, Pleasant, Street. Street. Pleasant Street. People yeah. might remember that. Where we, I don't know if you guys know, was there a location prior to that? It was way before us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I yeah. didn't know if we knew I've that. Been, I've been there for 13 years. So I, w I started out, We, um, in fact, both of us were at the Pleasant Street. And then I think it was around nine years ago, then we moved over to where we are now with the Council on Aging building. Yep. 110 Rockland Street. 110 Rockland Street. So for folks who don't know, oh, there was a picture of our building. We um, we currently share space and we have been for a number of years with the Stone Council on Aging, um, which can be really great for intergenerational stuff. But um, we are together in that building and we are on Rockland Street, which sometimes throws people off because it's kind of in a little residential district. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about, so Teresa, you started to talk a little bit about um, when you first came to the Youth Commission. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and then um, Melissa can tell us a little bit about her background. Okay, well, I'm a, I have a, uh, I'm an LMHC, so that means a licensed mental health counselor. Um, I have a master's of education in counseling and then advanced graduate studies. Mm -hmm. um, before I came to the Youth Commission, I used to work um, for a number of years in foster care and adoption. Um, I worked on a rape crisis team uh, at a battered women's shelter, a number of different things. Mm -hmm. um, and since I've been there for the past 13 years, I've done a lot of, we, we actually spend a lot of time making sure that we keep up with things, mm -hmm. so get in a lot of training and certificates and stuff so I can touch upon some of the things that I'm trained in, but yeah. you know, substance abuse, um, Again, uh, I'm, I'm a QPR, which is um, uh, suicide prevention mm -hmm. um, yep. trainer and a number of other things. But Great. Yep. All right, cool. Melissa, how about you? Tell us a little bit about your background. So I started with the Youth Commission in 2008, mm -hmm. so right out of um, graduate school. So I attended Boston University and got my master's in social work from BU. and. Uh, my bachelor's background is in psychology. So I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker. Mm -hmm. um, I supervise grad students um, who are on the social work path that intern with us at the Youth Commission because mm -hmm. we are a small clinical staff. So yep. uh, we're able to double with the help of our interns through the school year. Yep. Um, so prior to coming to the Youth Commission, my, my background is pretty similar with Teresa's. I did some foster care. Yep work. I supported foster parents and um, parents that were on the path of adoption, um, just kind of supporting and maintaining foster kids in their homes. Um, I also worked at a domestic violence shelter um, prior to getting my master's. I started in residential working with um, children and teens who were displaying some severe behavioral health issues and were placed in residential settings. So that was kind of where I started. Uh, my career was in residential. Mm -hmm. um, aside from the Youth Commission and seeing kids for counseling at the Youth Commission. I also, um, I advise students at BU mm -hmm. um, part-time. I also do some crisis clinical work in an emergency department in a local hospital. Mm -hmm. So we wear many, many, many hats, hats. Right, and lots normally. of experience that you guys mm -hmm. um, yeah. bring. So let's talk just for a second, because you both mentioned, mm -hmm. um, so we do have um, master's level social work interns during the year. So can mm -hmm. you, one of you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah, well that's kind of how we double our staff because mm -hmm. it is a small team. Yep. Um, so each of us uh, supervise somebody working on their masters. I'm in the, you know, 
somebody that's going to be eventually in having an LMHC mm -hmm. and like um, Melissa. <laughs> 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 Melissa. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. that you were going to pick it up from me. Oh, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> she so didn't write her name. So then I supervise <laughs> the social work path um, yeah. students. Yeah. So, yep. We're, and I mean, we're. Uh, I have to say, you know, a little bit of bragging, but we are really coveted. Like the, we really have. Um, uh, when at the end of the year, when the interns leave, they're always like thrilled to have been with us, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so they get really excellent experience and stuff, but that is how we're able to double the, our ability to be able to do the, mm -hmm. th the various things that we yeah. So we are. It's a, a competitive internship too, yeah. I mean, because we only have two slots, we're only right. so big, we don't have, you know, a ton of space, so right. we can only take on two students a mm -hmm. year, so mm -hmm. it's pretty competitive. We get a lot of applications, and mm -hmm. from there we're only able to select the the two candidates that the best. Yeah. right yeah yep. interview the best yeah mm -hmm. and so it does sound like you know we are we're a placement that students really want um, mm -hmm. which is good for us that means we get really good candidates and, yep. and like you had said so and they are mm -hmm. these are unpaid internships so mm -hmm. um, it really does allow us yep. to do a lot with less and it's a really good setting for students to learn in as well just mm -hmm. because we're rare and we're unique at the youth commission because because we're a free service with the town, mm -hmm. we don't have to deal with insurance companies, whereas you know a lot of places do. Mm -hmm. So right. um, it gives the students a lot of flexibility in like really working with diagnosis and changing diagnosis and kind of bouncing ideas off of us and kind of being creative and being able to see kids for as long as they feel is needed mm -hmm. instead of being on like an insurance's timeline. And sometimes that's not a long enough timeline to really right. do the work that the youth needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like we get a lot of good feedback from the students about the environment that we provide in learning. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty flexible and accommodating. Yep. So let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. So you had said one of the things you mentioned was that, you know, we are we are a town department and I think mm -hmm. um, folks don't necessarily mm -hmm. know that about the Youth Commission. It does mm -hmm. make us unique that our services are free to student residents and mm -hmm. their families. Mm -hmm. So let's, mm -hmm. let's get into that a little bit about um, sort of who, you know, what kinds of services we're able to provide through the town um, to our youth and families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we do, it is a free service. It's mm -hmm. individual counseling, family counseling. Um, we work with siblings as well. And mm -hmm. then we have, we do some, offer some groups mm -hmm. that are focused on various uh, topics. Um, in the past we've done, it really depends on what the needs are of the community at the time, but we have um, a running group that's very popular, that um, a babysitter training that mm -hmm. includes CPR and first aid. We have um, a youth leadership group mm -hmm. now, um, yep. which is with our AmeriCorps fellow. Um, and then we also, we've done, uh, well, I run a bereavement group mm -hmm. that, also, that includes, it's primarily adults, but then that includes, um, unfortunately, parents who, you know that we've worked with mm -hmm. that may have lost uh, a significant other in their life. Um, we have uh, done preteen esteem, mm -hmm. um, anger management. It really depends on what the needs are right now mm -hmm. of the, and we try to uh, change that up mm -hmm. uh, as we get feedback from the community. Um, yeah, we hear from the schools a lot. Yeah, if they're seeing a trend or. You know, they're getting a lot of kids that come to guidance and they're all presenting with, you know, social anxiety or self-esteem mm -hmm. issues. Like today I got an email yeah. um, from one of the counselors over at the school that said, hey, are, can you do anything around self-esteem in the summertime or mm -hmm. body image in the summertime? So that's, mm -hmm. you know, we're always kind of getting feedback about what the schools are seeing and what they feel like they need. And then we kind of just accommodate mm -hmm. those needs and put on different groups. Great. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about when we see youth, what's the age range? Like how young could somebody be to come in and, and be seen? And yeah. So um, they have to be school aged. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it can be as young as five years old mm -hmm. and sometimes kids are in school a little bit longer than, you know, 18. So right. mm -hmm. we've seen kids that are 19, if, as long as they're still, you know, kindergarten to senior year mm -hmm. um, and they're in school then we're able to see them they're okay. considered a youth and one of the neat things I feel like I've learned from you guys and I know that we do trainings is some of the modalities and sort of the ways you can interact with younger kids around like mm -hmm. sort of play-based therapy mm -hmm. can you right. tell folks a little bit about 
like, you know, I know there's like sand tray and there's art related therapy and some of the right. sort of interesting things we do, yeah. not just with little kids, but you know. Right. Well, I mean, you gotta, mm -hmm. with this particular age range, you have to be creative. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, not every kid is excited to come in and sit in a chair and talk about some really difficult things that mm -hmm. are going on. So the play kind of is really our way of just being creative and setting an environment that feels safe and um, fun because mm -hmm. you know we want kids to want to come back so that they are more comfortable with talking about what's going on yep. so we can dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. um, and sometimes a lot of things come out in play like when you are playing in the mm -hmm. sand and they're kind of showing you a little bit of their world through their eyes it's kind of an easier way to interact with the youth mm -hmm. okay. and we have ongoing training uh, so mm -hmm. we have ex ex uh, experts coming in you know bringing us up to up to date on different modalities mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the different types of yeah. things. That so it sounds be. like play, but it, you right. know, we know clinically that they're actually getting a lot more out of it. Mm -hmm. They're able to mm -hmm. work through some of the things that they can't articulate right. for the little right. ones. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so let's talk about some of the um, like the referral process. So if mm -hmm. I was a parent in Stoughton mm -hmm. and I was wor I had some concerns. Mm -hmm about my child, what would I do? How, you know, how would I engage with the Youth Commission? You'd call us. Okay, so I would start out, yes. I would call you. Step okay. one, Yep. Um, referrals usually, ha they have to be generated by a parent or a guardian of mm -hmm. the child. Um, I mean, our referrals come from different avenues, so the Dedham Juvenile Court sometimes, yep. if a kid mm -hmm. kind of comes through um, and a CRA is filed or the, you know, the family mm -hmm. is in need of services and they're a Stoughton youth, they automatically kind of come to us to be seen for counseling. Yep. So, but the parent has to generate that process. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much a parent will call and say, my child is in need of services. We do a referral over the phone just to kind of see, you know, what the child is presenting with, what kind of services they need. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we set up an intake session um, where the parent will come in and just kind of give us a little more detail mm -hmm. about the family background and what's going on. And mm -hmm. then we set up sessions from there and mm -hmm. the child will come in for consistent counseling from there. Yeah. The other thing is that we do a lot of parent consultation as mm -hmm. well. So I've had, there have been times that parents just call up and say that there's a particular issue yep. mm -hmm. and they just kind of need to process it. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe they maybe they will or will will not refer mm -hmm. their child for therapy, yep. which is totally fine. Um, in fact, I do some parenting groups as well. So um, we we really do try to meet the needs, you know, as they're coming in. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we often have a wait list because you know we are a small clinical mm -hmm. team. Yep. Um, we try to do what we can to mm -hmm. um, bridge the gap as much as possible. But I'll, I do work a lot with the parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I, just as another scenario, if I was a parent and I found, you know, let's say I was cleaning my teenager's room mm -hmm. and I found some marijuana and I mm -hmm. said, oh my God, I don't even know how to talk to my kid about that. Could mm -hmm. I call somebody at the Youth Commission and, and just get some help figuring out? Absolutely. How do I have this hard conversation? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... And so that would be right now. So that would be, right, no, so that like, would be easy. Like we could, you, yep. you know. So we, we also just, just for people to know, like yep. we can take phone calls, and and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to become a big, you know, ordeal no. or to set up mm -hmm. therapy with your mm -hmm. child. It could just be, right. I need time. I just some need support. a little time on the phone and some support, right, yeah. to talk through yep. something. Great. Um, let's think about. Um, so I know one of the things that has come up is so we have guidance counselors in the mm -hmm. schools and we have adjustment mm -hmm. counselors in the schools, and sometimes mm -hmm. people get confused about. What is the difference between the kinds of supports that they provide to students mm -hmm. and um, the kinds of supports we provide and how we work together, the Youth Commission and the schools? Can you guys talk a little bit about how those, how they, those things look different? I mean, I, I see it as the Youth Commission is a resource for the school mm -hmm. and it's more of like a partnership. I mean, when you think about it, mm -hmm. guidance counselors, school adjustment counselors, they are spread thin. You mm -hmm. know, usually you get a school adjustment counselor and they are overseeing an entire class which mm -hmm. is quite a bit of students yep. and a lot of it is trying to maintain these students through their school day a lot of their caseloads are usually kids that are on IEPs but there mm -hmm. are a lot of kids that are not on IEPs yep. um, so a lot of our our referrals from the schools come from kids that they're seeing on their end that are constantly visiting their offices need mm -hmm. some extra support outside of school I mean I don't I don't think it's possible for the guidance counselors and the school adjustment counselors to have the capacity to be able to do ongoing therapy, um, family therapy, mm -hmm. sibling therapy. I mean, there's only so much time in a school day and the kids have to get back to 
class and finish out their school day. So right. that's kind of where we come in. We've also been used in crisis situations. Right. You mm -hmm. know, if a kid says something pretty alarming at school and the school is concerned about safety, then sometimes they send kids our way to do like an emergency evaluation where we're meeting with the student, we're assessing mm -hmm. for safety, um, and we normally have to figure out like, yes, this child can return to school or possibly this child needs some support before they're able to return to school safely. Mm -hmm. So they kind of use us as a resource um, yep. because they are spread pretty thin mm -hmm. with all the students they have to maintain in a school day. Right, right. And so I, I think one way it was described to me, and you guys can tell me whether this is accurate or not, would be like, so the guidance counselors and the adjustment counselors, like their main focus is to really get a kid get kind back. of stabilized and get them back yeah. to class yeah, as opposed to what day. you're talking about, which is really right. ongoing support and mm -hmm. growth and, mm -hmm. um, and sort of helping them right. in the long term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I also, I know that we have, unfortunately, we've had some tragedies in our community over the years. Um, we've had some recent yeah. ones in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about how the Youth Commission works, maybe Teresa, a little bit, like with yeah. the schools in that situation? Well, again, I mean, we often, um, we just offer extra support, mm -hmm. either going out and talking and being there just to kind of help out in talking with the students and being available, you know, at the school setting. Mm -hmm. But um, the staff sometimes need support too. Yeah. So there have been times that, uh, that we have gone out and just spent some time being available, mm -hmm. you know, to help them process through because they're trying to do their job and you know, mm -hmm. keep on functioning and stuff, and they're personally affected by some of the tragedy right. as well. So it's been, you know, really a wonderful um, opportunity, you know, and situation that we've been able to work together. Mm -hmm. um, so and so, I know sometimes mm -hmm. the crisis the crisis team at the school will reach out right. to the both of you yeah. and say, mm -hmm. we have this going mm -hmm. on. How can we think about? Right. You know, these are the sort of types of individuals or groups that are going to need mm -hmm. some support going forward. What advice do yeah. you have? Can you come yeah. to the school during the day? Right. You know, and and maybe and they might be referring folks who need exactly. extra help as or even time just doing on. some of the follow up like aftermath mm -hmm. because sometimes yep. you know, you get hit. You know, you have to do all the the stuff that you need to do to just get through, and then mm -hmm. as it's settling down, you still will have an after effect. Right. So I've gone out to the school at their request and and done some. Um, I, I'm really into mindfulness and mm -hmm. meditation yep. um, and yoga and that as much as I may look super nervous here, which I am, <laughs> um, I, you know, that is kind of like my thing mm -hmm. and, I have, and I'm certified and have a lot of training in that too. So I've gone out and actually worked with some of the, mm -hmm. um, with some of the teachers and the guidance one-on-one, mm -hmm. um, -on -one, yep. which is really nice to have that. Just as a you know, just as a, a little extra shot. Yep. Um, not as an ongoing regular thing, but mm -hmm. just as needed. Right. Just That's to give really them nice. some extra tools extra and support. yep, mm -hmm. and support to handle it. That's great. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about kids and some of the groups, mm -hmm. and I know we also have some stuff going on for parents, both mm -hmm. um, things that we've done in the mm -hmm. past and things mm -hmm. that are new, and so. Um, Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about um, strengthening families and some of the work we were doing mm -hmm. for um, younger parents, kindergarten parents. Um, I know Teresa has a group of young parents at the Jones. Maybe yeah. some of those types mm -hmm. of that work as well. Well, um, yes, we've, we have been trained in a program that it's a 10-week um, evidence-based program called Strengthening Families, mm -hmm. and we used to offer um, a group um, for a number of years we were doing it and um, and then that kind of it wasn't getting populated enough and it's pretty intense work mm -hmm. so um, so we've taken pieces of that and, um, and as well as other work and stuff mm -hmm. and and then tailored it according to the needs um, so right now I am doing a parent group at the Jones School um, along with um, with the staff there mm -hmm. and uh, that's once a month and again tailored around specifically what um, the parents are asking that they need mm -hmm. um, and the teachers are really feeling that would be helpful. Um, there's, we are in the process of trying to create something that's going to be a, um, a strengthening family program that's going to be tailored specifically for um, to be more uh, fulfill our cultural needs and stuff and mm -hmm. we were just talking about that uh, recently. So that's yeah. something that's in the works. Yep. Um, Hopefully, with the Brazilian um, and the Portuguese uh, population, so yep. mm -hmm. which is a real need. Um, 
So, so like strengthening families 2.0 or yeah. something, right? The next <laughs> we're, generation. We're, we're in the process of yeah. figuring that out. Yep. So, so that'll be something exciting, I think, for maybe for the fall for yep. folks mm -hmm. to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we also did some work this year. We we tried out some stuff for um, kindergarten parents of kids who are entering kindergarten, right. um, which mm -hmm. I know can be as a parent who went mm -hmm. through that not that long ago can be kind of a, yeah, it's, a it's a big transition, yeah. right, yeah. in a household, yep. Mm -hmm. So just to get ready for kindergarten mm -hmm. and so offered a couple workshops and they, and um, so that they can stop in and just get some some material and also to, for them to meet other parents that are gonna right. be going through that and mm. make some connections. Yep. So, yep. Um, so that was a, a good, and again, that was just responding to like what are some of the needs that um, of our community. Right, so things that either parents mm -hmm. brought up or are sometimes our elementary saw. school principals mm -hmm. and the um, mm -hmm. the administrative mm -hmm. team, the superintendent's office will sometimes mm -hmm. approach us and say, hey, we've got this kind of going on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, and we know that it's like such an important protective factor for parents to be learning and practicing mm -hmm. sort of, Strengthening Families talks about it as love and limits, right? So yeah. being able to set guidelines and boundaries when they're little because right. you know as they get older that can that can become the the problems mm -hmm. get bigger more challenging right. um, you know and then for mm -hmm. my lens around the substance abuse prevention which is more mm -hmm. adolescent you know mm -hmm. if we can put those good parenting practices in place it's actually not that different right right um, so mm -hmm. thinking about it's about really creating a solid bond mm -hmm. and you know improving communication and helping you know reinforce being consistent and structure and all that mm -hmm. Yeah, all that good stuff. Yeah, I think um, besides doing all the clinical work, I mean, there's also some other stuff that yeah, we do. Yeah, absolutely. Like, as far as community, like really getting involved in health, healthy initiatives. Yep. In the, in yep. The, um, oh, you read my mind. I was about <gasps> to say okay, I, we, yeah. we were just. Uh, I was ta okay, having this conversation going, about safe, yeah. stable, nurturing communities, yeah. and so I'm thinking, yeah. you know, how the youth commission. Yeah contributes to that in, mm -hmm. in addition to providing these really important support mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. for families and more one-on-one. -on -one. But right. yeah, let's talk about some of the community initiatives that right. we have that come out of that space as well. Because that's one of the things that's really wonderful. Like we can be really flexible. Mm -hmm. Again, suiting the needs of the community, we can yep. kind of think outside the box and not just hone in and do like counseling, but you know, get it, getting youth involved in some community service projects. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa was running a group that was, um, you pro hopefully people have heard about mm -hmm. Pride of Stoughton, that yep. is an annual mm -hmm. uh, day event um, mm -hmm. where we, where there are, as, you know, pe people gather together and we really hope that we'll gather together and. Mm -hmm. We and have some photos of oh, people okay. doing some of the Yay. community service work oh, yeah. that day, yeah. Well, and yes, they, this is when they were cleaning up um, the grounds, uh, as well as we also do the community garden, which is, is kind of my baby. Mm -hmm. um, so we run a, uh, it's, it's free to Stoughton residents. Um, it's intergener, it was originally um, really focused on intergenerational, having youth and seniors working together. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of developed from there, but uh, also including families and stuff. So it's a really nice family um, activity mm -hmm. um, and learning just a very simple gardening, uh, project. Um, so you don't have so to come in being a master gardener because you you're going to help them. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I used to joke like if, if I could do it, anybody can because right. I really didn't know anything about gardening before I started it. Um, this was a grant funded program. We got, we actually were able to get two grants to fully fund it. Mm -hmm. So again, um, and build them. And then we expanded it also at the um, Capon Street um, right. housing, mm -hmm. which they, which I'm very proud to say that they are continuing mm -hmm. that on. So. Uh, which is really nice yep. too. So, yeah. So that's yep. one of one of our babies. Yep. And I would Pride say, Pride of Stoughton yeah. kind of started super small. It was just you know community service group mm -hmm. of youth, and then it mm -hmm. grew from there. And then other groups joined in. Mm -hmm. And this year, I think we had like seventy five volunteers show up. Yep. So awesome. the whole goal of it was for this to be a town wide initiative, mm -hmm. and not so much just like a youth commission. We pick right. a spot and mm -hmm. clean it up. It's everybody is you know, participating and making mm -hmm. and keeping Stoughton safe mm -hmm. and clean for people that yeah. live here. And yeah. um, it's really taken off. We get, uh, mm -hmm. we collaborate with the uh, Keep Stoughton Beautiful group, the mm -hmm. Beautification Committee, um, the Rec Department, yep. the DPW. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a whole town-wide mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. collaborative effort, which 
is pretty cool. And it happens every spring, mm -hmm. so every people spring. should watch for yeah. that for next yep. year, and because um, yep. there will be lots of information and about done, that. And we've done other um, community projects, like um, if you go to the Lesser Playground, just be just beyond it mm -hmm. or just behind it, is a Story Walk Trail um, right, where there's a mm -hmm. which which there's a book that's illustrated along um, a pathway, and that's really to get um, introduce children and families. Um, into the, into nature mm -hmm. and and that was something that um, again that was writing a grant uh, collaborated with um, with the library yep. um, Pat Basler at mm -hmm. the library and the DPW um, were wonderful in getting involved in doing their part in in putting in the um, yeah oh look at that we have a picture of that too that's oh, awesome that's great. yeah uh, so yeah. Um, that's been a that was a wonderful project mm -hmm. as well so mm -hmm. yeah and that's ongoing so people should go out and. Check that out. Too. Yep. And our mentor program mm -hmm. was new this year. Yes. So. Yep. So we've been working with the high school students to do some mm -hmm. mentoring of eighth graders to prepare mm -hmm. them for that transition, which is mm -hmm. also really important and exciting and mm -hmm. good for all, all the students, all the young people that are involved. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I think it's great. I think those things really speak to our sort of the fact that our mission can be broad, you know, mm -hmm. and that we we bring some really important skill sets and work to the community in so many different ways. Um, I know that sometimes the the individual, the the therapy, the counseling can be um, invisible to folks as maybe it should yeah. be unless you're in need of those services, right? Because right. it's private, that's, confidential, that's, yeah. Yeah. right? Right. And I know that that's something that mm -hmm. um, the youth commission mm -hmm. takes really seriously. So, so if you haven't heard of us, that isn't ne necessarily maybe it's because you know people are taking advantage mm -hmm. of those services mm -hmm. privately, but we certainly right. have a lot of mm -hmm. other community-based things that. Um, we want you to find us. So, oh, here is our information. Yay. Okay. Um, yep. So as we're closing here, I think it's really important for folks to know um, you can find us at 110 Rockland Street. Those are our hours, our office hours. Um, our office phone number is 781. Oh, there's a typo on that slide. 341. 341-2252. And um, you can find us on the web at the um, through the town website and then sort of backslash Stoughton dash youth dash commission, but you can find us by sorting through mm -hmm. all of the departments. Um, and we're also on the web um, Facebook. on Facebook. Facebook. And um, so look for us there because that's where you're going to see sort of the latest and greatest of programs and things that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. I know you're both yeah, a little bit nervous, but you did awesome <laughs> and you made it to the end. So yeah. thanks for mm -hmm. coming. And um, mm -hmm. then uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for thank inviting you. us. Yeah. All right. And thank you, Stoughton, for supporting the Youth Commission because mm -hmm. it's a wonderful service for our town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm.